Say to yourself, no more excuses. Do something and move forward. Dreaming of being rich, having good health, and getting good marks is very easy. Saying all this is easier than actually doing it. Other people also dream of achieving these things, but successful people work to fulfill their dreams. What is it that sets successful people apart from you? They do something every day to achieve their goals, while you sit around dreaming of achieving your goals. Successful people wake up early to start their day. They study or work for hours because it is the most important thing for them. Meanwhile, you keep procrastinating for hours because you are not motivated to start. Successful people also exercise for at least 30 minutes every day. But you just sit or lie down because you make excuses that you don't have yoga mats or workout equipment. The problem is that you always make excuses. Do these excuses help you move forward? Are they making you successful? Did you achieve your goals by making excuses? All excuses are nothing but words of failure. If you want to achieve something, you should not make any excuses. This is the first rule of self-discipline. Self-discipline is an ability and also the foundation of all kinds of success. It means doing the right thing at the right time, whether you like it or not. Self-discipline opens many doors of opportunities for you. In this summary, you will learn how to develop self-discipline. You will learn how to use it for success, responsibility, goals, work, time management, happiness, and peace of mind. Self-discipline and success. The world's most successful people also started their journey with very little or nothing at all. They had no money, education, or connections. Yet, they became successful. The secret is their desire to work hard. And for that, self-discipline is necessary. So how can you become like them? First, you need to identify the cause and effect of your current situation. If you haven't done anything to achieve your goals, it shows why you haven't been successful yet. But if you have done something in the past few years, months, or days, then you must have achieved at least one goal. This shows that you reap what you sow, which means that success or failure is already known. If you maintain discipline within yourself like successful people, you will become successful. But if you don't, then your failure is certain. Second, decide what you want, identify the cost you have to pay to achieve it, and make a firm commitment to pay that cost. Your desire to achieve your goals will take you far on this path. For example, suppose you want to be rich, healthy, and happy. Dreaming about these things is easy, but achieving them is difficult. Most people keep making excuses and delay their growth because they don't want to pay the price. But if you really want to change your life, you must be ready to do whatever it takes to achieve your goals, even if it means stepping out of your comfort zone. Third, learn from experts. Always keep learning from others' ideas and knowledge. Take time to read books about successful people. Listen to their speeches and attend their seminars. Then, implement their ideas into practice. Fourth, always keep moving forward and never stop. Continuous focus, determination, learning, and improving your skills are necessary to achieve success. Even after reaching your goal, keep moving forward, learning more, exploring, and achieving more. Finally, with the help of self-discipline, make yourself better. Do something you have never done before. Try to adopt the qualities of successful people. By bringing self-discipline and self-control into yourself, you can change yourself. A person with strong discipline strengthens their abilities, improves their character, masters their mind and emotions, 
and develops their self-confidence and self-respect. When you achieve self-discipline, all these become your assets. The path to success is not easy. It requires hard work and dedication. It will be a tough fight, but in the end, you will get something good. It is most important to celebrate success the most because you have trained yourself to achieve your goals and learned a lot in this process. Self-discipline and responsibility. Remember that whatever things you have done in the past and are doing in the present, they are all the result of your actions. You alone are responsible for your life. If you want to change your life, then take responsibility. The author of this book, Brian Tracy, once experienced the consequences of not taking responsibility for his life. When he was 21, he worked as a construction worker. He worked hard and earned just enough to meet his needs. He had no savings and lived in a small apartment. One cold night, Brian realized how he was living and that if he didn't change himself, his life would never change. So he took responsibility for changing his life. But because he didn't graduate from high school, Brian could only get odd jobs. So he needed to learn new skills and increase his knowledge. Brian bought some secondhand books the next day. He started reading and focusing on improving himself. He kept learning from these books and began applying the ideas he learned to improve his way of working manage his expenses, stay healthy, and start his own business. Having a strong determination is what we call responsibility, and Brian is the best example of it. If he wanted to improve his life, he took responsibility for it and focused on learning knowledge and skills. This just shows that by taking full responsibility for your life, your perspective and motivation will change. Another thing you should learn is to never blame others for your sorrows. This is your life, and you should have control over it. If you blame others and see yourself as a victim, you will just keep making excuses that prevent you from taking responsibility and action to fix things in your life. Furthermore, you should not compare yourself to others. Don't think that you lack something because doing so will discourage you and fill your mind with bitterness towards others. If you compare yourself, you will become even less responsible because you will feel like you can't change anything since there will always be someone better than you. Remove negative emotions such as guilt, jealousy, resentment, fear, and anger from your mind because it will only make you blame others for the things you're unhappy with. Stop making excuses. Accept peacefully who you are, what you have done, and what is happening in your life. Finally, do what needs to be done to make things right. Tell yourself that you have become responsible. Transform your negative emotions into positive ones. This is possible because your brain can focus on only one thing. If you choose to stay positive, you can train your mind to see situations differently. If you become responsible and focus on positive things, you will feel like you have control over your life. Identify the reasons why you should be responsible. By doing this, you will easily solve your problems. Moreover, when you are in a situation where you have no control, you should not get angry. For example, if it's raining, you shouldn't blame the sky for raining. No one can control the weather, so don't be sad about it. You should not add your past experiences to the present. Let go of those things, because you can't change them in time. Just think about your goals and how to achieve them. Right now, you can only manage your emotions and control your present actions. Self-discipline and goals. It is very important to set goals before taking action. Goals are different from our hopes and desires. 
To achieve goals, it is necessary to make an action plan, but hopes and desires are merely imagination. Therefore, setting goals is a wiser task because you create an action plan to achieve them. By planning, you also have a direction to reach your targets. Making a plan significantly increases your chances of success. Keep your goals written down clearly. If you have set any New Year resolutions, write down those goals on paper. This will create a track record for you, which will push you towards taking action because your note will remind you that you have goals to accomplish. Whether you believe it or not, there is power in writing something down. It helps you think about essential things and pay attention to them. It clears out unnecessary clutter from your mind because it helps you organize your thoughts. Therefore, writing down your goals on paper gives you a clear path of what to do, where to go, and why you are doing it. Goals awaken your brain's success mechanism. When you decide on a goal you want to achieve, you shut down your brain's default mechanism for easy and fun things. A client named John shared his story with Brian about how writing down his goals helped him become successful. John learned this technique at one of Brian's seminars when he was 35 years old. He used to sell cars and earn up to $50,000 a year. John understood that writing goals and making a plan to achieve them can change your life. He started doing it, and 12 years later, he achieved his goals. He became the president of a company and started earning more than $1 million. Therefore, John thanked Brian for giving him the best advice to achieve his goals. You can also use a seven-step guide to achieve your goals. First, be clear about what you want. Instead of more money in your income goal, Decide on a specific amount. Second, write down your goals on paper. It will help you stay on the right track because you can see it, read it, touch it, and make changes to it. Third, set reasonable deadlines. Take a goal and decide when you will achieve it. You don't need to have a perfect idea of time. Just set a date so that you know when to start and finish the task. This way, you force your mind to work on it because you know you have to complete it before a certain time. Fourth, make a plan to achieve your goal. Make a list of those small steps such as facing challenges, dealing with them, the skills and knowledge you need, and the names of people who can support you. Keep making a list of all the things until you complete it. Fifth, Arrange your list in sequence and priority. Sequencing helps you understand which things you need to do first, second, third, or later. Then, give more priority to the more important tasks over less important ones. This way, you will understand clearly which steps to take first and where to focus your mind. Sixth, take continuous action. After making a plan, do not postpone it. Start the work immediately so that you can save time and energy from being wasted. It doesn't matter if you are unsure about the future. What matters is that you take the first step. Be prepared to face disappointment and failure. Seventh, do something every day. Keep doing something every day for three, 65 days, even if it's the smallest step toward your goal. It's essential that once you start walking, you don't stop. Remember that you should always do something that helps you achieve your goals. Most importantly, believe in yourself that no matter how big or small your goal is, you can achieve it. Positive mindset and disciplined actions lead you toward success. Self-discipline and work. The two most important qualities for working are setting your priorities and maintaining discipline to do things effectively. These qualities help you consistently work towards success in your career. To work effectively, 
Self-discipline is necessary to make full use of time and focus on essential tasks. Poor time management leads to inefficiency, wasting time and energy, increasing stress as deadlines approach. Poor time management occurs when you waste time without discussing work-related matters. Activities like prolonged lunches, coffee breaks, reading newspapers, or surfing the internet waste time and energy. Avoid these if you want to double your income. You need to take responsibility for your income. If you aim to double or earn more than what you're currently earning, you need a plan of action. Otherwise, your dream will never come true. Setting a target to double your income requires doubling your productivity and performance. Then, companies will be willing to pay you more. The law of three will help you improve your performance. First, make a list of all the activities you do throughout the week, from Monday morning to Sunday evening. Second, ask yourself, what work can I do every day to help the company? Look at your list and identify this work. Third, ask yourself the same question for the third task. Now you have three essential tasks to prioritize within 24 hours. The Law of Three helps you identify the three activities you should prioritize, saving you from doing unnecessary work. Once you know your top three tasks, start prioritizing them daily. After completing significant tasks, focus on smaller tasks left over. Calculating your hourly rate helps you set your work priorities. For example, if you earn $50,000 a year, divide it by 2,000 hours. That means $50,000 divided by 2,000 equals $1.25. This means your hourly rate is $1.25, that is, the value of working for one hour. Knowing your hourly rate will help you be productive because you will value the time and effort you put into work. If your work doesn't pay you $1.25 or more, leave it and focus only on tasks that pay you fully. Remember to avoid doing significant or unimportant tasks. It only wastes time and hampers your performance at work. It may also be that the work you complete does not contribute to your manager's purpose or objectives. Instead, focus on tasks that need to be completed. Stay focused and avoid distractions. If your colleague asks if you have time to talk, say, Yes, I have time, but not now. First, I need to complete my work. Set boundaries between work time and break time. Don't surround yourself with people who like to waste time. If you feel like doing so, tell yourself to work first. Command your mind to focus on essential tasks. Start doing activities immediately during work time. Finish them quickly and ask your boss for more work. This is a secret way to increase productivity and performance, enhancing your reputation in the company. Another way to increase productivity is to arrive an hour early for work, continue working during lunchtime, and leave the office an hour after the end of the shift. Starting work an hour before others helps you prepare for work. Similarly, working during breaks increases momentum, helping you work more productively. Lastly, leaving an hour late gives you ample time to finish work and avoid pending tasks. If you apply this method, it will save you from delaying work and accumulating pending tasks. Self-discipline and time management. The only way to use time is to spend it. You can't stop time. You just have to use it properly in places that hold the most value in your life. Otherwise, you will waste your time on things that will increase your risk of failure. Time management is about personal management. It involves managing the activities you are doing. You decide when and where to use your time. You practice time management every day. It's a part of your life. It's just that sometimes you use it in the right place and sometimes 
you waste it. Time management is an ability that you can learn. When you decide which activity to do first, second, or third, you are already doing time management. This happens when you decide on an urgent basis which work is necessary to do and which is not. In short, time management means making decisions. You can identify the activities that are most valuable to you using the 80-20 Pareto Principle. This principle means that for difficult but necessary tasks, you only need 20% of your time. But when you complete them, they give 80% of the results. On the other hand, fun and easy activities are tasks that bring little or no value to your life. You spend 80% of your time on these tasks, but they only have a 20% impact on your progress. Therefore, the 80-20 principle suggests that you should prioritize your difficult tasks over easy ones because they have a greater impact on your self-improvement. Successful people pay attention to themselves. They use personal strategic plans to improve their physical, mental, and emotional energy. Their goal is to get return of energy from their activities. They carefully choose which tasks to invest their time and energy in so they don't waste their limited resources. Sometimes you may procrastinate, but self-discipline and time management can improve it. Always remember that important tasks yield 80% results in return. So you should consistently ask yourself if the tasks you are doing are worth your time. Ask yourself if their results are valuable to your life. If not, skip or stop them. Think about the effects, positive or negative, that tasks can have. For example, completing a college degree will have a positive effect because it will provide you with more job opportunities and a better future. On the other hand, partying with friends will have a negative effect as you will keep procrastinating work and eventually you will have to do a lot of work at once. A time management system will help you get out of tasks that are poorly prioritized. First, make a list of all the tasks to be done the next day before going to bed. Second, apply the ABCDE method. A stands for must do, which means identifying and prioritizing tasks that are most important and urgent for you. B stands for should do, which means tasks that are necessary but not urgent. These tasks will have minor effects whether you do them or not. C stands for could do, which means tasks that are not necessary and will not make a difference whether you do them or not. D stands for delegate, which means tasks that you should do in your free time. E stands for eliminate, which means tasks that you should not waste your time on. After that, rank the importance of all tasks and label them as A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. Start with tasks in Category A first. The rule is that until you complete all the activities in Category A, you should not move on to tasks in categories B, C, or D. Remember that you always need to prioritize tasks that bring more value. Self-discipline and happiness. Self-discipline determines your happiness. If you have control over your life, you feel happy. If not, you feel unhappy. The reason is whether you have achieved your goals or not. Self-discipline changes your life. It helps you control what you can control and let go of the rest. Control comes in two ways, internal and external. Internal control comes from within you. It's about deciding what to control. For example, you do what needs to be done when the situation changes where you are. On the other hand, external control comes from others. For example, a lack of education affects your job. Here, you control not being able to go to school, but the good thing is that you can change your situation, but it doesn't start from your external environment. Another reason for not being happy 
is your past. Past experiences, such as a difficult childhood, are external factors you can't control. But you can still move past your painful experiences by changing your environment or controlling your reactions. Self-discipline is necessary to change yourself or your life. If you have less education, you need to teach yourself with discipline. Then, you'll gain control over yourself and the bright future waiting for you. Happiness depends on your situation. Sometimes, even after achieving your goals, you're not happy because you wanted something more. For example, your happiness is earning $50,000 a year, but the satisfaction level changes over time. There might come a time when you're not happy because you're not earning $100,000. According to author Brian Tracy, happiness comes from five things. The first factor is being happy due to health and energy. You're happy when you're active, strong, and free from illness. Still, avoiding bad habits like eating too much fast food, smoking, or drinking requires self-discipline. The second factor is having good relationships with others, such as your spouse, children, parents, colleagues, friends, etc. Interacting with these people helps improve your mental health and develop good character. The third factor is doing meaningful work. When you do work, you enjoy, help others, or complete a difficult task, you feel satisfied and happy. For example, when employees feel their work is making a positive difference in people's lives, they feel motivated. The fourth factor is financial freedom, which helps you live without worrying about money. You can achieve it only by spending or investing your money wisely. The fifth and final factor of happiness is reaching your full potential, also known as self-actualization. With more experience, you feel happy and satisfied. Instead of just being satisfied where you are, you keep learning and developing yourself. There are many reasons to be happy. You can achieve them, but you should never be satisfied. Always keep yourself disciplined. Keep achieving your goals one after another. Keep moving forward despite challenges, and soon you'll become the person you want to be. Self-discipline and peace of mind. Self-discipline applies to actions, thoughts, and feelings. To achieve peace of mind, you also need a lot of self-discipline. Learning to leave things that are not necessary is like leaving a situation that does not give you peace of mind. The first thing you need to do is detach your emotions from the situation, such as taking different opinions from others. Remove from your mind the idea that your point of view is always correct. For example, people often argue about political and religious topics. In such situations, keep your emotions away from yourself. Try to discuss topics that are common to you so that your peace of mind is not disturbed. Second, do not blame people for things that should not be taken personally. For example, suppose a car suddenly cuts you off in traffic and moves ahead. This makes you immediately angry and you start blaming the driver of that car. But do not take it personally because you do not know the reason why he did that. Maybe he is getting late to go somewhere or maybe he is in a bad mood because he had a big fight with his spouse. If you do not take things personally, you will be able to remove negative emotions from your mind because then your positive mindset will come. In this way, you will avoid putting yourself in situations that cause you stress and disturb your peace of mind. Third, stop justifying or giving reasons for your negative emotions or blaming others. Talking about how bad your day was to others will not make you feel better. Any difficulty makes you uncomfortable, but you have to understand that there are bad things in life. Do not think too much about your bad experiences 
because it will have a negative impact on your mental health. Fourth, forgive those who have hurt you. It is possible that you have experienced rudeness, betrayal, criticism, cruelty, dishonesty, or dishonesty from others. You cannot avoid such situations, but you can definitely control your reaction. Think about how you will move on from those bad experiences and move forward in your life. It's just your decision. Remember that you have to keep control over yourself. It's your choice whether you forgive others and let go or keep blaming them. Forgiving does not mean tolerating bad behavior from others. You are doing this for yourself because you prioritize your peace of mind over your bad experiences. By doing this, you accept your responsibility and control over what happened and let it go. Letting go of these things will make you happy. By removing yourself from situations that cause you pain and stress, you can also achieve self-control, detachment, and self-mastery. In this way, you will be able to focus more on positive things and live your life. Conclusion First, you have learned that self-discipline, patience, and dedication are necessary for success. Just working hard and never giving up is the secret to success. In this way, you become a better version of yourself who is always ready to do anything to achieve your goals. Second, you have learned that you have to be responsible. Master your thoughts, emotions, and actions. Stop complaining or blaming others. Just take the right actions to live a good life. Remember that no one else will bring success for you. So whether you succeed or fail, it all depends on you. Third, you have learned to write down your goals and make a plan to achieve them. Do not waste your ideas for self-improvement. Write them down, plan the steps, and then take immediate action. You have to do something productive every day. Fourth, you have learned that you should only focus on work during work hours. Remove all distractions, even if you have to decline invitations from your colleagues. Remember that you have to prioritize important tasks. You also need to set boundaries for where to use your time and energy. Fifth, you have learned that self-discipline and time management go hand in hand. You have to maintain discipline in choosing which things to prioritize. Always remind yourself to spend time and energy on more valuable tasks. Otherwise, you will keep procrastinating and not achieve anything. Sixth, you have learned about the five factors of happiness, health and energy, happy relationships, meaningful work, financial freedom, and self-actualization. Being happy is a choice, so you need self-discipline to maintain good health be kind to others, stay motivated at work, be financially independent, and continually improve yourself. Seventh, you have learned that bad experiences cannot be avoided, and you have to discipline yourself to keep yourself away from them. The way to find peace of mind is to remove yourself from that situation, accept the pain, and forgive the person who caused it. In summary, these lessons will help you on the path to success. Self-discipline is an ability that you can learn and achieve by practicing continuously. Remember that self-discipline can change many things in your life. So stop making excuses and start improving yourself today. And with that, we finish this summary. What did you think of it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. What book summary would you like to hear next on our channel? Let us know by dropping its name in the comments. Your support means everything to us, so don't forget to like and subscribe. We're dedicated to delivering you fresh insights and book summaries regularly. Stay tuned for more enriching content. Spread the word and join us on this journey. Until next time, stay focused, keep smiling, and stay happy.